There are four things that affect depth of field within photography and getting to grips with depth of field in photography is one of the biggest challenges that you have as a photographer. But getting to grips with depth of field is gonna nail you more bangers, more keepers, and you'll instantly have more confidence within your own skills. Let's talk depth of field. So what is depth of field? Well, depth of field in photography refers to a zone of sharpness within your photograph. It's not a fixed zone, it changes in size and is usually described as either being very shallow or you get a very narrow area that is sharp, which is usually good for things like portrait photography or very deep where you get the whole image quite sharp and that's usually good for things like landscape photography. Now in last week's video we talked about focus zones and focus modes and your focus point does affect your depth of field but only by the fact that it determines your focusing distance and distance plays a big part in your depth of field. Okay so I just nipped outside I'm gonna do a quick experiment to show just how changing the distance to your focal subject changes the depth of field. We're gonna do two things. We're gonna look at how depth of field moves with your focal point, and then we're gonna to look to see how focusing on something further away actually increases that depth of field. So things that I'm using for this experiment, I'll say I've got the R6 with a prime lens on it, and we're gonna set that so that stays exactly the same for all of the shots we're gonna do. I've got a measuring tape, so we can measure exactly the distance between the subjects that we're focusing on. And I've got our subject, which in this case is the Canon 6D Mark II, the Canon 760D, and a well-known supermarket brochure. Other supermarkets are available. Uh, the first shot, we are gonna focus on the Canon 6D Mark II, which is the subject at the fore of our picture. And then we're gonna focus on the Canon 760D, which is in the background of our picture. And you can see without any doubt in these two pictures how our depth of field has moved with our focus point. So with the Canon 6D Mark II that is right here, uh, I've placed this magazine sat exactly one meter behind the Canon 6D Mark II. And now I'm gonna move this magazine one meter in the back of this camera. And now we can clearly see that the further away a subject is, the deeper the depth of field becomes. Because on the closer subject, when we had the magazine one meter behind it, it was far less sharp than the further away subject with the magazine one meter behind that. Showing that focusing distance makes a difference to the depth of your depth of field. So in a nutshell, your subject is further away, you get more depth of field. Your subject is closer, you get less depth of field. Now the focal length of your lens acts to magnify the scene in front of your camera, but it also has a big part in how wide your aperture is. Now when I'm talking about aperture, I'm not talking about f-stops. F-stops is a measurement of how much light gets into your camera, but your aperture is an actual physical thing, it is the opening of your lens, and that plays a big factor in depth of field. The wider the aperture within your lens, or the narrower the aperture within your lens, determines what rays of light get into that camera, and also determines whether they bounce around in your lens or not. The wider the aperture, the more those rays of light bounce around in your lens. Now the F numbers that you see on your camera are actually a mathematical formula where F stands for focal length. So if you think about it like that, focal length and that forward slash is a division sign, focal length divided by a number is gonna change depending on what that F is. So if you've got a 16 millimeter lens with a F number of four, focal length of 16 millimeters divided by four gives you an opening of four millimeters. But if you take an F4 200 millimeter lens and you take your focal length 200, divide that by four, means that the opening of your aperture is actually 50 millimeters. So although both of those apertures four stops of light, the actual aperture size itself is vastly different between that 16 millimeter and that 200 millimeter. So your focal length changes the physical opening size. And by changing the physical opening size, changes how those rays of light coming into your camera bounce around within your lens. And this is how blur is created on your camera sensor. And so the more zoom, the shallower the depth of field 
Camera type, or specifically sensor type, will also affect your depth of field. Now, I'm not going to spend too long dwelling on this because for most of us, we are now in the field with multiple cameras, but it is useful to know. Basically, the smaller your sensor, the greater the depth of field that you will get. Now, why is that? Because the smaller your sensor, the narrower your angle of view. An APS-C, for instance, versus a full frame, people talk about the crop factor. The APS-C is going to give you a feeling of being zoomed in more even though you're not. And so what will happen is you're going to have to step back to get the same field of view that you have with your full frame. And by stepping back or zooming out, as we just spoke about, you increase your depth of field. And so far, an equivalent image on a full frame and an APS-C, you are further back on the APS-C, which increases your depth. A field. And now for the more obvious one, aperture. Now, aperture is something that we've kind of touched upon already so far. And aperture becomes a really obvious one for how you change your depth of field. But aperture also control the amount of light coming into your lens. And sometimes you want the most amount of light coming into your lens. Sometimes you want to decrease the amount of light coming into your lens. Perhaps you want a longer shutter speed and you want to have f16 so that you can decrease the amount of light coming into your lens but then you want a shallow depth of field well it is manageable by knowing all four of these things now if aperture is the only way that you can control your depth of field the wider the aperture the shallower your depth of field so now you know what four things affect depth of field you can go out and get the images that you want to get and you never know you might learn something else by clicking this playlist right here i've been dave this has been let's click photography and from me for now Ciao.